Before we move into the video, it's time for you to join the movement with today's sponsor. Movement makes high quality and affordable watches and eyewear for both men and women. Check out the link in the description to visit the website, guys, and make sure you use code INCON at checkout for 15% off your order. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Smite Knowledge video. Today, we're going to be talking about diminishing returns, which is something I see a lot of people not understanding in Smite. Uh, it tends to be in video games a lot. Uh, any multiplayer video game tends to have diminishing returns, uh, particularly MMOs like to put this in for their PvP. But Smite also has diminishing returns, and a lot of new players don't know this. Sometimes veteran players don't even know this, but also the rules for diminishing returns in Smite are kind of weird and oddly specific, and some things affect it and some things don't. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So in con, what is diminishing returns that we're talking about? Diminishing returns means that when you hit a target with CC, CC done after that is going to be less effective. So we're going to use Uller's Axe as an example. Uller's Axe at level 1 is a nice solid 1 second stun. So assuming that an enemy character doesn't have any CCR on them, which is crowd control reduction, which you can have up to 40% on in your character in Smite, and assuming they don't have some sort of outside influence on CC, say like Tyr, who can't be CC'd for more than one second, you will get the full CC duration on that character. You hit Axe, you will stun them for one second. Now in Smite, if a character gets hit by another CC ability... Within 15 seconds, that next CC ability will be less effective, and that's what diminishing return means. So we're going to go look at that in-game. So I am a level 1 Uller, which means my axe will stun for one second. So if I summon a Neathba over here, and I go ahead and throw an axe on her, she is going to be stunned for one whole second. Now if I use another axe on her within 15 seconds... She's only going to be stunned for 0.66 seconds. And if I stun her again, she's only going to be stunned for 0.33 seconds. And that will stay on her 0.33 seconds until a full 15 seconds has passed. She will continue to only be stunned for 0.33 seconds. And I'm going to beat her butt because she deserves it. So, now that we know that... It doesn't matter what the CC is, right? It's easy that we're doing the math with one. So the first stun on somebody, the first CC on somebody is going to last for the full duration. The second iteration of any CC, it doesn't have to be the same type of CC, right? So I CC with one, if she gets hit by a different one, it's still only going to be 0.66 effective, 66% of the duration. And then if another CC hits Neath, Within that same time period, it is going to be 33% as effective, and it's going to stay for that entire duration. So 100% duration, 66%, 33%. That is how it works. There's three tiers, basically, of diminishing returns in Smite. Also, if you have any sort of crowd control reduction, so something like Spirit Robe, that will also affect with it. So I have 20% CCR. So let's say I was going to get hit by a full second CC but I've got 20% CCR, so it's actually a 0.8 second CC, right? Okay, well now I go down to 66% because I got hit again, but it's not actually 66% of the duration. It's going to be that 66% and then 20% of that 66%, basically. By 20% of that 66%, I mean another 20% off of that 66% of whatever number that is, not 20% total. That would be ridiculous and broken. So... Moving into the next step then, there are so many types of crowd control in Smite and Con. Yes, yes there are. So, what exactly are affected by diminishing returns? So, not all CC is treated equally in Smite. There are certain types of CC that are not affected by diminishing returns. And so let's go look at one of those. So, a type of CC in Smite that has absolutely... No diminishing returns on it is knockups. I flop this knee. She is knocked up for a set duration. I immediately hit her again. She is flopped for that exact same duration. Continuously over and over and over again. 
She will not be knocked up for any less duration. They are a type of CC and smite that simply is not affected by diminishing returns. These types of CC guys are called displacement CCs. They are grabs like Sylvanas grab, knock ups, knock backs like a gab rollout, and pulls. Okay, all of those are not affected by diminishing returns. They will always last their entire duration. Okay, now it should be noted uh, also roots last their entire duration as well. I do not believe they have DR on them. Somebody will have to double check me on that, but I'm pretty sure roots also last the entire duration. Now, those may last the entire duration, right? They're not affected by diminishing returns, but they still proc diminishing returns, okay? So the easiest example of this is think about Geb, okay? I'll just go pick Geb, I'll be right back. So Geb has both a form of CC that is not affected by diminishing returns and a form of CC that is. Geb knockup is a knockup, which means it is not reduced by diminishing returns, but it contributes to diminishing returns. Geb's ultimate is a stun. This is both contributing and affected by diminishing returns. So Geb ultimate is a solid two seconds long, right? So if I walk up to this knee and I ulti her, right? And then I two, I get the full duration on both those CCs, of course, not including uh, when I use the knockup, right? If you use the knockup one second through, then you've lost a second of the stun. The point being, if you ulti, then knock up, you're gonna get the full duration of both CCs if you time it correctly. Now, if I come in here and I knock up Neath first, and then I ulti her, that ultimate has diminishing returns on it and I'm not getting the full two seconds of the stun, okay? Uh, several guys in Smite have that type of capability where they can reduce their own CC. Uh, think about even uh, Bacchus can do this as well with his burp and his jump. I could have stayed on Bacchus, but Geb always comes to mind first. If you are to belly flop on Bacchus, you're going to knock up for an equal duration, right? And then you stun. Your stun is going to be at that 66% reduced diminishing returns duration. But if you stun and then you wait out the duration and then flop, your flop is still going to be the full duration, even though there's diminishing returns on that character because knockups are not affected by diminishing returns. Finally, guys, on the subject of diminishing returns, there is one type of CC that is not affected by diminishing returns, nor does it contribute to diminishing returns, which is banishes, something like a Freya Whoop. Freya Whoop is always going to last for the Freya Whoop duration, and when somebody comes down from Freya Whoop, they will not be any increased CC. So if Freya Whoop somebody and that you one second stun them, that that person will be one second stunned, assuming they were not CC'd you know, by anything else beforehand. So banishes don't contribute to anything. Um, those CCs we mentioned beforehand are not affected by diminishing returns at all. Root being the notable exception because I just really don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody will know down in the comments. I'm pretty sure it is not affected by diminishing returns, but does contribute. Uh, I'm fairly positive. But I hope you guys learned something today in this video. Diminishing returns can be very confusing uh, for new and veteran players alike. Uh, so hopefully this video helps you time out your CC better. Uh, if you've learned anything from this video, guys, it is that if you're going to CC, preferably do it in the order of things that are not affected by the duration. So make sure you use your hard CCs first and then your CCs like your knockup after your things that are affected by diminishing returns. So you're getting those maximum effects out of your abilities. Uh, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. And to be honest, it is not always the correct play to do Geb ult then knock up. Sometimes you want to knock up then ult. Um, but as far as CC duration goes, it is always the wrong play to do it in that order because you always have the shorter CC duration. So thank you guys so much for your support. Please let me know down in the comments if you'd like any other subjects covered. And as always, have a twitching day, y'all. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you like the channel, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell, guys, in order to get notifications for our uploads. If you want to go the extra mile to help support the Twitchiest community, you can always go to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash incon and use your Twitch Prime sub there. It's a great way to help support the community. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, 
Have a twitching day, y'all.